few tricks or tips I could share, I guess, uh, related to sorting on a, not sorting, filtering <laughs> on a date range, right? So right now, <laughs> the only one I have that I can really use as an example here in the medical office is our appointment index, right? So right now, of course, we have <coughs> lots of appointments in the system. I have it sorted by date order, uh, starting with the most recent going down, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, but what if we want to just filter out and see appointments in a date range? So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to stop running for a minute. And, uh, you know, we've done this kind of filter. Now I'm just going to do a real basic, real basic filter here, right? So, you know, starting off, I just have a, a simple row. I'm not worrying about having collapses or anything like that, right? We just have a basic row here with some inputs. Now I'm using our good old HTML text box. We talked about this in the past. Uh, the advantage of it uh, over uh, uh, the tag helpers that we have for the ones that we have for bound controls is this works very well for uh, controls that aren't bound to an, uh, a property of the actual model, right? And uh, as well, they persist their values on round trips, you know, to the server and back again and so on. So I have one for a start date and end date. Now, uh, remember, <laughs> in the actual data for the appointment, uh, the uh, two properties that we actually have there are called start time and end time. They're both full date times, though, with both, you know, year, month, day, hour, minute, second, etc., right? So we're going to be filtering the actual property start time, right? But in terms of a date range, okay, I'm going to go from a start date to an end date. And uh, I think I mentioned earlier that I'm not going to worry about time of day, right? I'm not going to filter right down to an hour, right? We're just going to say from between this date and that date, right? So how do we make this text box give a calendar, okay? Well, that's easy. We just add this HTML uh, attribute here, right? So we just say type is date, and that's all it takes. And then when it presents the text box, okay, it'll have the little calendar control and so on and so forth, and away we go. So that's good. So that gives me that. Now, coming to the controller then, this is basically what we have now. So the first thing I'm really going to need here is I'm going to need parameters, right, to get the values from those two input controls, okay? So I'm going to add, and they'll both be date times, okay? Start date and end date, right? There we go. Now, if I even run right now, let me just show you what happens when we get values coming into here. So, of course, I have to log in, and we'll have to come in here, da da ding bada boom and we'll go to appointment, right? So here we are. So notice that they come up just with the uh, uh, prompt here to put in month, day, year, right? There's a little calendar, and, of course, it does go to the current date if I, if I do that, for sure, right? Uh, but what I'm going to do, let me go to the controller for a second and set a breakpoint in here just so we can examine the values we initially get because we're going to learn something a bit about how this works that way. If I just click filter right now, right, then look at this. This is the actual value being passed in. Now that is basically the minimum value of the date time data type, right? So we don't actually get null. You might think we have a null value, but we don't. And that's important to realize. And that's going to be the same for both start and end date. Year one, month one, day one, 12 a.m., right? And that's uh, basically, as I said, in C Sharp, that's the, for a date time, that's the minimum value there is, right? So, you know, we can work with that. And the other day, uh, with a couple of students, I was talking about it, saying, well, you know, what you could do is you could, uh, you know, check for these values and substitute uh, other ones that make were more appropriate. Or, you know, even say you only want to find everything before a given date, right? Well, then you could use your end date for that value and just have the start date, leave it as the oldest date that the system supports. And that would actually get you what you want, right? Doing a filter between those two values. Similarly, if you wanted everything after a certain date, and you can put that in as the start date, but in this case, you'll have to take the end date value and then switch it because that's the oldest, right, date there is. So you'd actually have to maybe substitute. So in your code, check to see if it's this date, 111, right? and then substitute for the maximum date time value, right? And that would find everything after the actual start date value you want. So that's one approach you could do. But I, you know, in my experience, what I usually try to do, if it's possible, is have the initial value set based on the actual data in the database. It can save a lot of time, 
and actually be helpful to the end user, right? So that's the little twist on what I did the other day that we're going to put in place right now, right? So to make this work, okay, what I'm going to do is the first, if it's the first time we're loading the page, then what I'm going to do is we're going to go get the values from the database itself. So that's this bit of code right here, right? Now I could check either start date or end date, okay? But these are the values we have, right, that it gets if there's nothing specified. So that'll happen when the page is first being prepared to be displayed on the screen, right? When we're initializing the page, these values will have their uh, 1, 1, 1 value, right? So it'll never actually have that again, unless the user actually goes and enters it, but I'm not going to worry about that, okay? So I can check either start date or end date. I don't have to check them both. If either one is, is the minimum value, right, I can check either as far as I'm concerned. Prove me wrong, and I'll be happy to change it, but first time loading the page, we're going to set the date range filter based on values in the actual database, right? So to do that, okay, what I'm going to do is come in here. I'll set my start date and end date. They're both date times defined up here as parameters. Just a quick queries, right? Going to the actual appointments, finding the minimum. Remember, start time is the actual property in the controller that we're working with, right? So I find the minimum start time, convert it to a, just a date, right? And that's my start date. That just removes the time component. Same thing for the end date, okay? Start time dot date, okay? And that gets me the last date. So I'm going to through though through uh, <laughs> throw those into view data, okay? And then what I'll do is I'll take them and convert them to a string. Now, why this format? Well, guess what? We've talked about this before. Browsers like oh, the SI unit standard format, right? And that's exactly what we're going to do. So uh, uh, we're just going to actually convert it to year, month, day so that it displays properly on the screen. Right? Okay, hang on one second. I just need to do something here. Okay. All right. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So coming back to the index, okay, what do we want to find here? Well, we're going to actually then change this slightly. I'm, instead of null values here, I'm going to prop properly give it the uh, values from view data that we just added, right? So I'll just throw that in here so it will be our, our start date that we put into the view data. And the same thing for the end date. So instead of null values, we have the end date. Okay. Let's just come back to the controller. So that's good. So now it should initially have those values. And that's okay. Uh, one other thing that I've had come up in the past, and I had a particular client ask for me to have it work this way. It's always a question of what if they put the dates in the wrong order, <laughs> right? What if they put the older date first as the start date and the newer one as the end date, okay? Well, what the one client asked me to do, and Unless a client says otherwise, I've continued to do it this way because it just, you know, rather than coming up and yelling at the user saying, oh, you put them in the wrong way, right? Uh, just swap them, okay? And if, if the client wants it done differently, then by all means, just put a check to make sure they're in the right order and, you know, add a model error and go back to the page, et cetera, et cetera, right? But, you know, it's pretty easy just to do something like this. If the end date is before the start date, okay, then just create a temporary date time Swap them, and that's it. You're done. Okay. And that way, it really doesn't matter. They can put in either two dates, and you'll find it in the range between the two dates. Okay. Most people will never, ever make that mistake. So it's, you know, really not worth spending too much more time on it. Right? Now, the final step, okay, the final step really is just to add the filter. So we'll do that with our where clause inside the link itself. Right? I can take out the breakpoint now. Oh, okay. Well. I'm still running, I guess. All right. So I'll add the where clause to where the start time is greater than or equal to my start date. Now, if you want to play around with the equals and so on, feel free. But, you know, this, this works for me. The only other trick is because we have stripped away okay, the time component, if there was ever an event okay, where the start time was on the same day as our end date, it won't appear in our filter, right? Because... Remember, we've stripped the time away from end date, but it's still there in the start time. So I could handle this in a couple of ways. I could strip the time component out 
start time, but all I really have to do is add one day, right? When I'm doing my where clause, I'll add a day to the end date, right? So that'll basically be one second past, <laughs> uh, uh, well, it's actually technically midnight of the start of the next day. So we'll include everything that's on the actual end date then, okay, in this where clause. And that will give me exactly what it is I'm after. So let me just uh, run this again. Yeah, I'll have to reapply. That's okay. All right, we'll just log in. And here we go to appointments, okay? So you see it has the actual oldest and most recent dates, okay, in the system. Now it's sorted right now, okay, in by reverse order. So you see there's a bunch here that actually happened on, there's two dates that actually happened on uh, December 6th, right, in our seed data, okay? So there's two events actually happening on that date. So they're within the range specified here. Now, if I change this to the fifth and filter, those two are gone, right? Because they're no longer within the date range, right? If I put this to December 5th, <laughs> uh, oh, that's August, okay? Come down to December, put it to the same date. There we go. And we're just getting the records that are actually on December 5th. And that's the behavior that we probably really want to see, right? And if I click clear, then it always goes back to the actual minimum and maximum dates in the actual system. So, you know, in my experience, this is usually the best way to set up this kind of a date filter. So just thought I'd share those tips with you. Uh, you can change it, right? Modify it as per your heart's content, but uh, it gives you something to start with and then you can apply your own smarts to maybe making it better or customizing it the way a particular client wants it to be. All right, hopefully that's a help.